I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Nathan Simmons, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, the show where we try to find the silver linings in some of cinema's bleakest endings, and which can only be defeated by new life. <laughs> new life, which is ironic because we're missing a life. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not dead. Well, well we don't know that. <laughs> oh my god. Well, listeners, <laughs> listeners, start fucking, because... <laughs> Yes, listeners, we need you guys to procreate real quick. So, <laughs> so two things right off the bat, Nathan. Yeah. And I don't want to uh, put a letter grade on your on your intro here, but sure. you did make a slight blunder. Oh, it's the spooky linings. It, thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. It is the spooky linings playlist. Man, recording these ahead of time is really fucking me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still September. It's nice, though. <laughs> yeah. And second of all, yes, we are we're missing someone. Mm. Um, I don't know if death has gotten to him uh, <laughs> in some Rube Goldbergian yeah. elaborate way, but um, well, he did he did call us from a roller coaster and it, said that he might true. be a little late, <laughs> <laughs> which is odd because all I could hear was <laughs> that's, that's all I could hear, right? Um, but. You know what? That's okay because we may be joined by Mally Moore later on in the episode. We don't know. <laughs> the ghost of Mally Moore. <laughs> the ghost of Mally may come back and tell us what's going on on the other side. But that's okay because I don't know how to how to properly give them an introduction because we've had them on uh, one bad horror movie, mm-hmm. one I would say fun horror movie. Sure, maybe I'll let them uh, chime in here, but. This is now a three-peat yeah. for our guests that are coming on. Two ladies who are doing their best. <laughs> it is none other than Brandy and Jed returning. Which one was the fun horror movie? <laughs> <laughs> I I thought Freddy vs. Jason was a pretty fun one, maybe. It is. We should have played them on with some new metal. Oh, that's, <laughs> God, we should have. <laughs> like, dun, 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 dun. Exactly. <laughs> When the Incubus song started in this movie, mm-hmm. I was like, are we only bringing Brandy and Jen on for like new metal horror Ooh. from 2003? Hey, Ooh. apparently. I, you know what? Hey, I do like me some Limp Biscuit. okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. And corn. Oh, corn. Well, let me ask, let me ask you to this. We, we made a promise. I think it was either at the end of Hide and Seek or Freddy versus Jason. It was one of the two, but mm-hmm. we promised we'd bring you two on for a good movie at some point. <laughs> Does this check that off your list? Yeah, this was supposed to be the quote unquote good movie. Yeah. You're talk- <laughs> Which like, I mean, early 2000s me at like, I thought it was a good movie then. Like, yeah. Hold on, hold on. De- define good in your opinion. <laughs> well, it's it's good for your opinion. Do you consider this a good movie? It's a movie. It's, I can give it, it back. It is. <laughs> it was made. I feel like it works for the time period. Like, mm-hmm. if it were to come out today, then yeah, it would be jokes. Well, you know what, Brady? This movie changed my life when it came to driving behind logs. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I feel like we need to give it credit for how iconic it is. At <laughs> yeah. least. I was going to say, this is my first of probably many bold statements in this episode. This movie did to logging trucks mm-hmm. what Psycho did to showers. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yep. I mean, before this, we were all driving behind logging trucks. Yeah. We loved it. Yeah, not even just logging trucks, just anything like with overhaul things. Oh, yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Brady, we were just raw dogging the highway just driving <laughs> behind trucks. Girl, we weren't driving when this movie came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were on the fucking school bus. I was applying lip gloss with the rearview window down with no concerns. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Yeah, I was always leaning out of windows and yelling pile up pile up pile up <laughs> like did 9-11 even happen before this movie came out yes what year no was this, this 9-11 was before this movie came out yeah this is two years after 9-11 oh, okay. yeah. yeah we were fucking in middle school no but pretty we were cautious once we got our license well yeah because that fucking scene just replacing your head <laughs> well <laughs> my mom also paid for defensive driving classes which i'm oh, yeah, thankful same. for something for my mom in this movie no yeah my my mom did the same thing did, <laughs> did they teach you how to avoid logging trucks no they just <laughs> taught me that passengers always die first and wow I'm sorry. wow let's get one thing straight class <laughs> <laughs> no yeah that was what like that was what fucked with me about it like watching it as a kid is because like this could easily happen on a highway. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> yeah, like, if they're not careful enough with, like, uh, strapping everything in, like, one wrong move, that's it. Mm-hmm. The whole highway is taken out. Well, Brandy, I mean, we 
we're in Atlanta. Oh, you were in Atlanta. I'm still here. So I, this is just a daily for me. Yeah, sure. yeah. Like, let's see what's on fire on the highway today. No, yeah. <laughs> I fucking refuse to drive in Atlanta. Don't. I hate it's it. It's a trap. Don't fucking do it. Yeah, it's terrible. No, yeah. 85 is, is a terrorist attack. <laughs> it is. It is. I was going to say, too, we're recording this around the time where there seems to be a pandemic of trucks carrying sauces and stuff just slipping out and all beer? over the yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. beers alfredo yeah. sauce <laughs> some really delicious Rex. yeah i saw that i'm like wait why was just like alfredo raw dogged this in this truck <laughs> in this economy we're gonna have to put a raw dog counter on this episode Nick. <laughs> in this economy you can't spill stuff on the highway no all right no, 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 no. everything is too expensive for you to be spilling sauce on 85. Yeah. Yeah. And everything, is, like, and we're in a shortage of everything. <laughs> yeah. Ev- no, we can't do that. Yeah. This ain't a fucking Olive Garden. It's not bottomless. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think this is some kind of clever marketing for the next entry? Because mm. Final Destination 6 was just announced. Do you That's think there's right. going to be some Prego a la, uh, you know, highway incident? Well, I mean, there's a Prego lady in this one. There is such a Prego lady. In this one. <laughs> believe there's still another one coming out i did hold on look they're gonna do like fast and furious and just go in space uh yes please uh, yeah yeah side me up side me up please <laughs> is that is that where the fast and furious is now <laughs> no i just made that up <laughs> i was about to say i i tapped out of those after four so i have no idea what's going on with the final destination movie. wait no brandy <laughs> five has the best ending no i don't fucking the, want, no. no five we watched that ending we screamed well are we talking about final destination or fast and furious all of them <laughs> yes okay <laughs> i was talking about uh fast and furious I'm like, yeah, oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, no, yeah. Five is the best one of those. Yeah. <laughs> After four, I was like, I give up. No, that is true. Stop at five. Yeah, that's fine. That's it. Quick uh, observation here. I think it's actually because of this time period, mm. and there was all these quote unquote extreme movies coming out around this time. <laughs> like there was Saw. Sure. There was the butterfly effect. Things that had to be like quote unquote intense and real. I am shocked that throughout this franchise, I never tried to tie in a 9-11 or something Honestly, similar to this franchise. Please don't. Yeah. We're, we're not going to forget. They told us not to forget in sixth grade. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I should clarify. I don't want that. Yeah. But. No, yeah. It's just like you would think it would be really easy yeah. to phone in. For mm-hmm. sure. We were just talking about how like that first movie came out like just before 9-11. I mean, it came yeah. out the year before and it, it it's one of those that just like feels almost like a time capsule because of that. Like yeah. you can just get on and off of a plane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can get on and off a plane. You could say the plane's going to blow up yeah. and then just get released and not get shot in the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could travel with a fucking Glock. Yeah, not get sent to prison forever. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, one of these days, I think we're going to I think the whole franchise here qualifies for the show. I could be wrong, but uh, we'll get to those other Final Destination movies at some point. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and because I think I know where we all stand on this. We all saw this when it initially came out, right? Like yeah. this, this is nobody's first watch. Right. Right. So how do we feel on this rewatch? Are we are we <laughs> like, yes, I'm I'm in or it's not great. How do we feel? Um. So for for me, I, I always this has actually always been my favorite of the wow, series. Same. That's same. Cold. No, out, out of the series, yeah. What? Yeah. No. I like the really dark comedy in this one. I don't, I almost, but on this rewatch, I felt like it could go further. Mm-hmm. Like there's stuff where I'm just like, you are taking this entirely too seriously if you're going to also keep there's moments when I'm watching this movie and it feels like when you're playing on the playground as a kid mm-hmm. and everyone's just making up rules as they go along. Oh my it's God, like, the rules make no sense in this movie. Like now I have a force field. Well, actually, no, you got to do this. And actually I meant this and this character doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And it just, every 20 <laughs> minutes we have a new reset for this movie. Well, mm-hmm. no, Candyman walks in and says, this is a new rule. I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah. New rules. <laughs> yeah, what you can't, I was like, what the fuck is Candyman doing here? Like you can't just say, Hey, a baby will solve an issue. I'm yeah. like, that's not how that works. I don't remember them recasting Tony Todd as Bill Maher, but that was <laughs> real weird. <laughs> yeah, but the whole like needing to have a baby thing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is this Handmaid's Tale? <laughs> yeah, like who said that? No, it is. It is insane that like they go to they go to talk to Tony Todd, who, by the way, never means anything in this series. <laughs> not at all. Why is he not the Grim Reaper? Why why not just make him something? And they they're they're like, they're like, we're it's happening again. We're all in trouble. And he's like, well, uh, I don't know. It seems pretty dark. Uh 
Did, did anybody uh, at that wreck get cream pied recently? <laughs> or like, oh god! I, I just—it's so insane that that he's just like this is a thing I didn't mention last time, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So does he have like a book with death or a conference call? Right. Yeah. Why is he so knowledgeable about that? Means he's seen this a lot. Yeah, I was like, I was like, is he is he death and he's just not telling them or That's something? That's what I thought, Brandy, in the first movie. That's what they should have done. They should have made him the Grim Reaper. Wait, what was he in the first movie? Yeah. He's in like four of these and yeah. he's like no i'm not i've he said in interviews he's never meant to be death or anything and i was like so then what's your deal yeah man yeah, why are you here <laughs> yeah like why do you, i guess i guess because he works in a morgue so he's pretty connected to okay, the, plenty of people do that brandy people work at pathologist offices i worked at a hot topic and i don't know robert smith <laughs> look hey as much as like death like that's that's a full-time job like people have to take shifts okay yeah, yeah. you think the grim reaper is one person oh my god a bruce almighty but instead of god he's playing dead <laughs> oh <God. laughs> you think santa does this all in one night <laughs> oh my god could you imagine if tony todd was tim allen instead <laughs> <laughs> you think the grim reaper is one person come yeah. on. yes i think grim reaper does it all in one night nah it's dude taking shifts come no. on <laughs> well do you think um tony todd is like also on the sidelines teaching like Charles Lee Ray had to do the voodoo to become Chucky. Like he just knows all this stuff. I do a dumbbella. Uh, he he gives that. Yeah. That would be a movie I'd like to see. Just Tony Todd creeping in in a child's play movie. Yes, please. Thank you. Sure. Well, okay. So I think we're all. I don't think anybody answered my question now that I think about. It. Yeah, I saw this. I saw this when it uh, came out on DVD. This was actually my first. Uh, this was my introduction to the franchise. I had mm. missed the first one. Mm. And so it was like, I was like trying, I was like clear in her room, just trying to connect the dots. <laughs> Wait, so you, have oh you my ever seen the first one? Because the first one's pretty good. Yes. Oh yeah. I've gone back. Okay. Yeah. Wait, I did want to know. Okay, Jen, if you don't think this is the best one from the franchise, what is to you? The first one. That's the oh. intro to all this madness. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The first one's pretty good, but it's, it doesn't do enough tongue in cheekness for me like yeah. this this is a comedy <laughs> yeah honestly one of my notes was like i feel like this was the best one because this was the first that the lore got established yeah because what the first one is just like oh these people died in a plane but with this one it's actually like some connect like it's like oh it's the connection to flight 180 so right. it made it more interesting to me yeah well i like how they the people that survived were connected to 180 in some way. Yeah. Like, oh, I missed this conference, and then now I'm all of this happens. But that also still barely matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it got tied into the second one. Yeah. That was why it was cool. Like it, like it had an established lore at this point that made it interesting. Well, here's the thing about the 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 lore to me. I in the first movie, I'm down with it because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, the the plane crash where they were sitting, how the order they would have died, etc. After the first movie, I don't the, the lore is I, I I don't give a shit. I just want to see some deaths in interesting manners. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like this franchise should have stopped at two because okay, one the first two the instances where it happened those make sense. It's like yeah, a lot of people die in plane crashes, mm -hmm. a lot of people die in car accidents. After that, they started coming up with these scenarios that is just like okay, y'all are doing too fucking <laughs> oh god <laughs> NASCAR <laughs> right the bridge collapsing. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> still die by those things yeah but maybe i don't know highway <laughs> accidents are much more likely than oh a roller coaster flew off. and then after the second one it's just like this lore doesn't need to be expanded on yeah. like this was this was enough i agree well and then the first the first one has that fun thing where i mean it started as a spec script for the x-files yeah. so like <gasps> what yeah so they're not really worried about like following through with totally explaining it which yeah. it, you can kind of like it those early seasons of X-Files, I mean, James Wong and Glenn Morgan also worked on the X-Files and they they were like, we we don't always feel the need to kind of follow through and say this is exactly what's happening. And I think that that's something that the sequels were like, well, no, we have to over explain now. <laughs> yeah. Now we have to. For some reason, they feel the necessity to like, let's build this lore in stone for some reason. But <laughs> I, I don't care. Like after the first movie, I don't care. Just make deaths. In interesting ways, and in Rube Goldbergian ass, sure, you know, crazy hijinks. And that's the thing that I love about this one is like the first movie, you can almost see things being manipulated. Like, yeah. there's a bit where like water just like goes up a wall to, yeah. to make. Oh, the water 
the water is such a scamp in that oh, first yeah. movie with Todd's death. Yeah. And then in this in this movie, they are like they seem like wild freak accidents, aside from a couple of moments where it's just like, well, no, there's clearly like a ghost pushing that crash cart or something like that. <laughs> oh, um, what's his name? Uh, the motorcycle rider when he's in the hospital. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. yeah. Death really doesn't want him to live. <laughs> no. Look, I remember one of my notes throughout this is death is a dramatic diva. Yeah. yeah. Death's a scamp. Death is such a scamp. Yeah. Death is a petty bitch. Yeah. I just think death just wants attention. I can fix him. Oh, <laughs> if death just would have went to therapy, all this would have been avoided. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's just a petty bitch. What if I look at this and say, I'm like, I'm not playing your pranks. Just take me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, they tried that. That that's one thing I do like about this movie is yeah. that same guy, the motorcycle rider, tries to kill himself. They can't break it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Kyle from Living Single. Yes. Yeah, I made that note. I made that same note, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I saw that, I was like, "What the fuck is Kyle doing?" Here? <laughs> All right. Well, that that was part of a weird thing too with the early two thousands, with people from established TV shows just doing horror, like uh, the girl from Seventh Heaven doing Saw Two. It's like, why are you in this movie? Oh, sure. Oh yeah, Jessica Biel. <laughs> no. Well, no no, no. One. no, what's her the name? Other, the, the short one. Yeah. Oh, yes. right, right, right. <laughs> the short one. <laughs> I don't know her name. I don't I don't either, but yeah. I mean, Claire, she's from Heroes. Yeah. Oh, really? That was a thing that, that time. No, no, no. For, we should establish. This girl's name is not Claire. Oh, I thought as it was, I so it's thought clear. it was. Clear Rivers. Her name is Clear <laughs> Rivers. As soon as you said that, I literally just scrolled down the page on IMDb and saw that and was like, what the fuck? I clear know. Rivers? So it's not Claire. Because all my notes are... I wrote Claire. It's clear. It's, it's the most insane character name since Helen Shivers and I Know What You Did Last Summer. <laughs> since Pussy Galore is for me. <laughs> clear Rivers? Like, get the fuck out. Clear Rivers, Flying Circus. <laughs> I thought that whole first movie, her name was Claire. Yeah. No. And when I see it in the subtitles that it's clear, I'm like, there's no fucking way this is accurate. Yeah. And then they show it on a newspaper. Yep. Well, you know, she dies by fire, so that's pretty... Interesting. Oh, oh, touche. Yeah. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. I, I've, I've had my money on water on that one. Yeah, her and Kyle blow up together. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, death gets a twofer with that death, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Why don't we talk about uh, the production and all of that surrounding Final Destination D. <laughs> Final Destination. <laughs> Missed opportunity there. So the year is 2003. The director is David R. Ellis. And the last movie this guy directed before this, I, Nathan, I think I know that you know. <laughs> Does anyone know what movie he directed right before this? Just a guess. The Matrix? Reloaded? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. What a what a swig for the fences with the mix. <laughs> he was a second unit director on Reloaded. I'm, lo I'm looking at his IMDb. It, oh. it came up in 2003, so. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the movie he directed right before this was Homeward Bound 2, Bro. Lost in San Francisco. Wow. <laughs> And also directed Snakes on a Plane. That's an amazing movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not going to slander that movie, all right? Oh, he also did Deep Blue Sea. And The Final Destination. Yeah. The good one. So he came back. Which is the fourth one, right? Fourth or fifth. Yeah. I think it's fifth. Fifth. Yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Sadly, this man has since been deceased. Oh. Nathan, this is kind of a running trend, it seems like, for spooky linings. Yeah. He was found dead in his hotel room in South Africa, prepping for his next movie. Did he die in a weird... Way? Well, that's the thing. There was no foul play. But they never said why he died. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Damn. No cause of death. Yeah, he was 60 and they just found him dead. Wow. This dude was kind of a badass, though, because I don't know if you saw this story too, Nathan, but yeah. when researching him, I found out that, yeah, he had he was a stunt driver, Yeah, I believe, at one point, and um, was going to get carjacked. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was trapped between two other cars. And he, like, with his stunt driving prowess, he, like, whipped the car out of the spot and, like, scared the carjackers away. Yeah. <laughs> That's badass, man. Yeah. yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. He also did Shark Night. Uh, yes, which I think is actually pretty fun. Love it. <laughs> um, he's also a stuntman on a movie we're doing later this season. Oh, I, I could, can I probably guess, right? I yes. Could probably, yeah, okay. A, ve a very erotic film we're doing Ooh. later this season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to that. It looks like he has more stunt credits than he does directing, yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I think he was a stunt guy first and then stepped into the director's chair, yeah. Yeah. Which is why this movie, the stunts are insanely cool. <laughs> like, Bonkers. This movie looks great. Well, they use a lot of practical effects, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. The car chase, well, the 
uh, car wreck is almost all practical, and wow. it looks fantastic. It looks incredible. Although they they said that they couldn't get the logs to bounce right, so they had to do CGI logs. <laughs> right. The logs are CG. Yeah. Yeah, the logs are CG. There's a couple of things that are CG, but for the most part, all the flips and everything, very real. Mm-hmm. The movie stars Keegan Connor, Jonathan Cherry, AJ Cook, Ali Larder, David Bataku. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. I'm sorry. Uh, James Kirk. Tiberius, uh, <laughs> Michael Landis, and Linda Boyd. Uh, the movie had a $26 million budget, which woo, is insane to me. Yeah. Wait, only 26? I feel like 26 is a lot for a horror movie in the 2000s. No, I thought it was going to be more than that. That's twice the budget of Freddy vs. Jason. There you go. <laughs> well, they had to get all those dummies to set on fire. You know? Oh my yeah. god, the dummy work in this movie is so good. <laughs> yeah, there's some long boy dummies in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> the movie grossed 91 million dollars worldwide Mm -hmm. and currently and i think unfairly sits at a 48 percent on rotten tomatoes wow really 48 percent they're cowards yeah fucking cowards on i on rotten tomatoes (laughs) well it's rotten tomatoes what do you want probably people that rewatched it as an adult and was like yeah never mind yeah probably (laughs) it's also just horror movies are classically shit on by mainstream Mm -hmm. critics as well yeah okay well it's been a while. It's been a while. Enter the stain cube. I was going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, you know, you could always also go with the classic. It's been. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Please don't. Don't. It's been a minute. I love how you had that cute. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so high. Yeah, there you go. I'm so high. And uh, <laughs> let's. Man, please. Bomb, <laughs> oh, bomb. Yeah. Let's uh, revisit the trailer because it's been a minute since I've seen this trailer. And I'm excited. Mm-hmm. We're taking bets now. How many, uh, because this is the early 2000s, how many uh, flashes of white do you guys want to take a bet on are in this trailer? What's the over under here? 22. 22 flashes of I white. I was going to guess somewhere in the 20s as well. Yeah. Right. I was going to say just a dozen. I'm going to be nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the, the, uh, the Price is Right rules and just say a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to win. I do. I do. I don't know, man. Like when we watched the Spider-Man trailer, it almost gave me a seizure. That's true. Yeah. I almost had epilepsy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do this. I'm going to count out loud every okay. time we see one. Are we ready? Go for it. All right. Here we go. Oh. Love that new line logo. There was one. One. <laughs> this kid. I know. Two. <laughs> oh, asshole. Three. Honestly, everybody that was in this wreck was an asshole. Yeah. Four. Yeah, this whole sequence cracks me up. Five. Just everybody Five. doing the most to say there's a wreck coming. Yeah. Six. Everybody here should have their driver's license revoked. <laughs> like, everybody was committing some kind of crime in their car before this all happened. Sure. <laughs> oh, shit. Was that seven or eight? I lost count already. Eight. Okay, eight. Oh, got the logs. I don't count that one. <laughs> Very little dialogue. Yeah. God, it, there's so many spoilers in this. Good God. Nine. Yeah, they pretty much should put the whole wreck scene in it. All the kills. Yeah, they showed the entire thing. I mean, you put what, what's the money on the screen. That was ten. Ten. <laughs> yeah, they should. This is every single kill. Almost. Yeah, pretty much without the actual gore. A rift in death's design. Which means death could be coming for us. Can't man. <laughs> oh, this guy was a fucking idiot. Oh, God. <laughs> That his nipples were upsettingly large, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, just take out the piercing if your nipples that long. He's just. <laughs> All right. I don't want to be uh, the I told you so guy, uh-huh. but I counted Tid, which I think okay, man. makes me the winner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So just. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> cool, you get nothing. <laughs> all right. Good day, sir. <laughs> I know we're all champing at the bit here. Let's talk about this movie. Okay. Yeah, where do we want to start? Because I want to start with the guy talking about his death theories on television. Okay. Because yeah. imagine seeing this show. <laughs> yeah. This is some late night TV. I thought he was on the Between Two Ferns set. For <laughs> <laughs> like, what is he trying to warn people about that death exists? Yeah, I don't know. exactly. I mean, we know that. It's, yeah. it's there every day. Yeah. He's like the Dr. Phil of death, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> what I was saying, though, about the budget is I can't believe it's $26 million in the early 2000s because that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And nothing against Ali Larder, but if she's the biggest name in your film, you're in trouble. Right. Like, there's nobody in this movie. Well, the, the kills are the star, right? Yeah. Death is the star. Yeah, Get death it is right. the star. Yeah. <laughs> 
I get just so excited when I see that New Line Cinema logo show up. Always. Every time. So good. Oh, yeah. God. So classic. And I, you know you were firmly in the 2000s with a horror movie when you see a typewriter-esque font for your opening credits. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. This opening scene is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's so bad. That's the first thing I saw. I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> Every Final Destination protagonist sleeps in a terrifying room with yeah. like toy spiders, and death clowns. masks, dolls hanging from the ceiling. And we look at everything with a fish eye lids. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what are they trying to tell about this movie? She's arranged knives to point at her own photos. <laughs> That's 100% true. Like none of this has anything to do with the actual movie. Yeah, exactly. Just like, oh, wait, it's a horror movie. We want to be creepy. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just feel like she goes to Pier 1 is like, yep, that clown right there. You know what? The whole stop. <laughs> Give me that clown. I want to talk about, I don't know her character's name, but her friend. You don't have to. Oh, well, that's true. I want to talk about her friend. Her friend who's horny for her dad on yep. Maine. I want to talk about <laughs> her friend? for the rest of the episode, if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> She's insane. What is this character? <laughs> so I didn't know if she was going to start like taking out her titties right there. Like, you're talking to her, her friend's dad. Yeah. Never in my life have I done that. I mean, <laughs> come on! I'm getting horny. Yeah, I'm gonna start says. saying that. Yeah, I'm gonna start saying that to Priscilla when we're going to the grocery store. Like, come on, <laughs> come on! I'm like, ma'am, can you go rub one out? And calm the fuck down. Yeah, like relax. Oh, wait, they're gonna go, they're going to Daytona, right? Yes, they, okay. They're going to Daytona from upstate New York. Yeah, what the fly. fuck is wrong with you? Uh -huh, they're driving. <laughs> okay, I just got back from Daytona, and I boy, are your arms tired? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't die in a log accident, so that was pretty cool. Good. Yeah, Daytona's good. a place that exists it's a place it's a beach don't re recommend it speaking of uh this girl and her or her horniness <laughs> i've been torturing my wife lately oh no i just silent well softly moaning at the end of every sentence oh, yes. I <laughs> and she is not a fan i'm like can we get some taco bell <laughs> <laughs> she's not a fan <laughs> so when the divorce papers are gonna get filed yeah. just remember that <laughs> uh but yeah this character is insane it's it's, it's nuts yeah i can't believe it. car's not the only thing dripping <laughs> all her friends were assholes pretty much oh yeah. man the guys in the back i'm like i, I couldn't wait for them to die I'm yeah like, Please. Uh -huh. and her being like uh it's daytona not somalia like, oh. Okay, racist. oh my <laughs> what god what an insane line yeah i was like wow and this whole this whole premonition of the car accident is great. Sure, I think it's perfect. I know writers who use subtext and they're all cowards. Yes, like the <laughs> like the school bus <laughs> chanting "pile up, yeah. pile." The kid with the toy cars. Before real fast, before we even get into that, why did the transmission fluid look like ketchup? Right, it looked like blood. It's art, Brandy. It's blood. It's no, it didn't look like blood. <laughs> it looked like ketchup on pavement. Yeah, your car is bleeding. That's a very special light. I thought it was Ivan's ooze. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like ketchup on pavement. It sure did. I also did enjoy the um, <laughs> get a look at those titties. I yeah. love them. Sorry. <laughs> Much like Freddy versus Jason, we were obsessed with only showing uh, fake titties yeah, in horror only movies. Fakes. Yeah, two thousands. <laughs> none of that real shit. Get out of here. Yeah. Go get some implants and come back to set <laughs> with those titties. And why did he call weed big old gagarera? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, go ahead and kill this guy. I'm so glad you brought up the kid with the toy trucks oh, because God. I've never noticed this before. And I, I posted this on my Twitter if any of you out there follow me. But this look that this girl gives. When this, I love it. It looks like she's like, like uh, okay. I'm like, why would they direct this kid to do that? Well, look at her face. She's like, uh. <laughs> it's like she's asking the director, are we going with this? Because she's like... Cause she's like, I don't know what to do. This is this is the quietest car ride for a spring break trip I've ever seen. Yeah, this is the most boring fucking group of people to go on spring break with. It's awful. Yeah, while well, this guy <laughs> smokes his dirt weed in the back. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, here's my thing with everyone in the car accident. Uh huh. They all deserve to die on some level. All of them? I mean, we all do. We I, all I mean, deserve to die. Not just I'm these not, people. <laughs> I'm not rooting for anyone. No. Well. No, well, like, they were flashing out all these cars, and everybody was, like, doing some shit, like, snoring coke yeah. and drinking. drinking. Putting their coffee on the steering wheel, because that's, like, the, what that guy Bro, did. Like, why is your that, coffee there? That is the most offensive one to me, is that guy. The cop. With a coffee cup with no lid. Yeah. No lid. I'm like, sir. I kept rewatching that because that pissed me off so much. I'm like, why are you over here just raw dogging your coffee on <laughs> the steering three, wheel? That's three, by the way. You fucking <laughs> idiot. Well, he's a cop. Yeah. yeah, he already sucks because he's a cop. Oh, and side note, main girl, mm. she had no seatbelt. Oh, no seatbelt. One of the funniest lines of the movie is when she sees the guy drinking, she goes, that's real responsible. Beat. 
and then she puts the seat back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Oh, man. Yeah, this movie's, I think, intentionally funny. Like, yes. a lot of horror movies from this time were unintentionally funny. This one, I think, got was in on the joke. Definitely. Like, for, for real. No, yeah. By the way, just a quick side note, it is 100%, because I looked it up, illegal to lane split in New York okay. on the motorcycle, just so everyone's aware of that. It should be everywhere. Well, Look, that's why I'm like, that guy on the motorbike was already being a dick. Right. I, I will say this, as someone who used to drive a motorcycle in Los Angeles, uh-huh. it's almost imperative that you do. Otherwise, you run the risk of just being crushed between two cars. Like, the it's- Don't ride on the highway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Hey, fair enough. I sold my bike. Don't worry about it. <laughs> wait, wait, sorry. Like, as soon as I see motorcycles on the highway- I'm just like, you're a dick. Sorry. Now I exclusively drive log trucks. <laughs> log trucks are good for the economy. Sure. That's going to spill on the road like Alfredo sauce. Sure. This movie also is, I mentioned Ali Larder being the biggest name. Mm. This movie is full of poor man's versions of actors. Sure. Because there's the uh, the chubby guy in the back that's smoking, that's yelling about titties. Yeah. That's just a poor man's <laughs> Haley Joel Osment. Those great New York boobs. Great New York boobs. <laughs> the cop is a poor man's Wes Bentley. Yeah. I, I, I wrote that down. Yeah there's, yeah, there's a bunch of nobodies in this movie. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I don't remember anyone else. Other than Candyman yes. and Kyle from Living Single, I, don't, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's true. Tony Todd is is prominent. I knew, I knew literally only the two black people in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just, I, this movie, I, I love this pileup scene so much, guys. It's so good. It's insane. They don't skip on anything. It's it's still pretty terrifying yeah. to this day. Yeah. It starts with the cop's head going through the back of his windshield. Oh, yeah. God. Death. Oh, it still, it still haunts me. Which, he's a cop, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a cop. I'm going to say, <laughs> for my money, best death of the entire franchise. It's good. It's simple. Yeah. And... I I I noticed a lot of new stuff on this rewatch. The face he's making right before the log hits. Oh, oh yeah, it's so fucking funny because he's just. Whoa. How would you react to a log that, no, no, coming that's, towards you? Yeah, you're just fucked. I just always assumed it was a dummy, but it's not. They CGI'd his face onto it, right? Mm-hmm. So you could have that reaction and. Oh. His head explodes like a fucking watermelon out the back of this car, and yep. it's so good. Um, do we have? <laughs> so do we good. know how much like? Blood and guts was used. Oh, I'm tons. It's a lot. Oh yeah, I did want to talk about the quality of the gore in the movie because some. It's great. It's good. It's so good. Like, really? Yeah. I think this guy exploding. Because there were moments where where I'm like, this looks like watermelon chunks. This looks like Gallagher did it when the kid, <laughs> when the kid gets squished later on. I'm just like, oh, he was full of just. Fucking Hawaiian punch. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what we're full of. We're full of watermelon and Hawaiian punch. <laughs> but Uh-oh. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Because even like um the guy that gets um the drug addict guy that gets like bifurcated yeah. oh my. times two, that's all practical. Like they filmed him in three different positions and then and just then killed him together. Yeah. And then they killed the fuck out of that guy. <laughs> I love that. That's why you've never seen him again. Yeah. <laughs> he actually died. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like after I feel like after seeing recent movies like with like show and gore like barbarian comparatively, I'm like sure. this wasn't on par. Well this I mean this is twenty years ago and this is yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that guy also uh discount Ashton Kutcher, just so we can get that out of there. That's fair. Oh I just realized Discount Ashton Kutcher is in the Wolf Cop movies, which oh, if you have not watched, those are so you fun. Keep that. <laughs> uh, all right, but yeah, I, this this whole premonition scene, I think better than the plane crash, and I think the plane crash is really great. Yeah. It's way yeah, better. I agree. I think the plane crash is really good. Um, but no, there's there's so much crazy shit. The guy on the motorcycle getting cut in half by his motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy in the Trans Am getting burned to death. I'm sorry. The people with the water bottle. That shit was funny because oh, like, yeah. so it happened so fast. How yeah, it got stuck, and then they're like ah, and then explode. But the guy, the guy in the car that's burning alive, and then the specter of death in the form of an 18 wheeler emerging oh, from the oh, flames. God. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it turns into maximum overdrive for a minute. <laughs> it sure it's does. fucking awesome. In my notes, all I wrote was demon. Tra- yeah, exactly. <laughs> so fuck, it might as well have the goblin mask on the front of it. Because <laughs> I'm just like, wait, how, like, by logistics, how did this truck even get to be, like, engulfed in flames and it's just, like, coming <laughs> towards them in this, like, 
hellish looking way. Um, death, Brandy. I don't know, but it fucking rules. Death was driving it, and it said, <laughs> I'm gonna finish beep, this beep, off. coming through. Because I'm just like, after all the destruction that this truck just went through, right. why would it still be moving? Yeah. Like, is it supposed to be on a hill or something? Pure spite. It runs off of pure hate. Basically. <laughs> it goes on for like two and a half minutes, this, mm-hmm. this pileup scene, and then when we have the wide shot of the accident happening, yeah. it's like three seconds. They yeah. look yeah. over and there's just a car flies into the <laughs> yes. air. Yes. It's so funny. Okay, but could you guys imagine if it was like Mario Kart sound? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> While this tragic event is happening. <laughs> we'll love it. Love it. And a blue shell comes yeah. out of nowhere like the truck. Please just make an edit with that clip. So good. I do like that they also continue the wow. trend. <laughs> I, do, I do like that they also continue the trend of using very all the nose music cues uh-huh. because in the plane crash. It was John Denver, oh, yeah. and in God. this, it's Highway to Hell, right. which is a great song choice. But yeah. also, I'm like, if you flip on the radio station right now to any random radio station, mm-hmm. chances are pretty high you're going to hear Highway to Hell anyway. Yeah. Like, that's not really much of a clue. Right. <laughs> what would it be now? Like, am I? <laughs> what would the song be now? <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> is a wet-ass pussy going to kill me? <laughs> Oh my god, if I died to WAP, I wouldn't be upset. No, 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 no. <laughs> Am I going to be trampled by stallions? Yeah, for real. <laughs> it's the only way to go. <laughs> yeah, sign me up for that death, please. Why not? So they they take AJ Cook here back to the police station because she warns everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, but not before her friends. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome awesome fucking death scene these guys get plowed by this fucking truck it's great well and she's also she's also tipped off that it's all happening again when the pigeon lady from home yes! alone 2 <laughs> taps on her window oh, yes! <laughs> uh oh but i wish that the, the blonde friend's final line would just mm. be like does this mean i'm not gonna get like to relieve my horniness and then just hit by the truck <laughs> right. oh no i thought it was like does this mean i can't fuck your dad <laughs> <laughs> oh that would have been perfect <laughs> But they take her back to the police station, and then for whatever reason, they keep Evan, the lottery guy, yeah, the, the lottery winner, as we come to find out, on the other side of the glass for some reason. I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah I didn't get that either. Oh, yeah, that first guy? He was a fucking idiot. Right? <laughs> we'll talk about that guy. That guy. I kept waiting for the police chief to be like, you know, son, you know, yes. this is why I don't, you know, but it, yeah, it does not really shake out at all. Doesn't mean anything. But then the motorcycle rider guy, um, what is his name? His character name again? It's like Eugene. Eugene. Yeah, yeah, that was Eugene. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. Um so so Mark has, becomes Mr. Exposition all of a sudden. Sure. Um we get a recap of the first movie no less than four times from different characters in this movie. Yes we do. We sure fucking do. This is the second time. <laughs> so you know, he gets Mr. Exposition out of nowhere, and which is crazy because this guy becomes like the most non-believer out of everyone uh-huh. for some reason, which I I didn't think makes a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And also, he just witnessed a shit ton of people die, and he's like doing the fake death voice, like the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy, read the room, dude. <laughs> like, dude, eighteen people just died, yeah. 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 and he's chuckling it up. Can I? Can I point out something yeah. fucking insane? Mm. Uh, so T.C. Carlson, Kyle from Living Single, uh, he his character's name is Eugene Dix. <laughs> his name is Eugene U- 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 Dix. Dix. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. With an X. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so then we can get to the next scene, which is a, a great one, too. This guy, Mark, wins the lottery. It's not Mark. <laughs> oh, yeah. And all these gold digging horse are calling him. Well, no, this man lives in absolute... Yeah. yeah, this guy it is disgusting. This guy has no priorities. Mm-hmm. Um, no, yeah, this guy's an entire mess. First of all, you win the lottery and you don't buy a house. Right. Yeah, you don't leave. Yeah, now I, I would not go back to that house. He lives in the tenement building from Joker. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ju- he just won that day, right? Like the day before. I don't care, Brady. I would have called my landlord and said we're done. Yeah, no, Goodbye. no, no. He, it is not the same day because he bought. The car with the lottery winnings. Mm-hmm. So he's at least a couple days in and he's still like living in filth and yeah, squalor. He goes back to the shitty house. He's got an iMac and everything. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is when you hear those stories about people that win the lottery and then go broke and they're miserable. I'm right. like, well, yeah, look at this guy. He's smelling old noodles Ugh. to see if he can still eat them. <laughs> well, I figured maybe he was like, I don't know, like a traveling musician or somebody that doesn't give a fuck about their home. No, this man is trash. This guy doesn't have any talents. No. This guy, yeah, this guy works in the back house of a restaurant. He has nothing. That does, Jen, how does that negate somebody being trash? Yes. Yeah. You know how many musicians are trash? That's fair. Well, you know, you know he's trash because of the meal he eats, which is 
leftover Chinese food and mozzarella sticks? What? I thought they were fish fingers. What the fuck? That he put on top of the fucking stove. Oh. Like, you yeah. can't put that in the oven? Uh, you heat it up on the fucking stove? God. He took his shirt off to fry grease. <laughs> yeah. Make it make sense. He put his whole hand <laughs> in a garbage disposal. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, I don't know about you, Nathan, but when I'm cooked, that's the first thing I do. That shirt's got to come off. It's going to be restricting. Shirt's got to go. Yeah, it's going to be restricting. With hot grease yeah. all over your body. Yeah. I, literally, I literally just couldn't get over the fact that like he already saw that his his microwave was sparking and starting the fire yep. yeah. and then that's when he decides to go for the ring yep. Yep. <sighs> like your house is about to be on fire and you're trying to get a fucking ring God. well did you guys notice too on on you know the magnet falls into the chinese food on the yeah. Fridge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah on the fridge did you guys notice the foreshadowing of his death yeah. now, now it spells i oh yeah it said like hey e yeah oh i thought it was pretty good okay yeah I saw that too. yeah these hoes don't even try to be subtle about it that they're gold digging on them <laughs> yeah which I wish there would have been one male caller that was like, hey, buddy. There is. He's like, man, you coming to party? <laughs> that's right. That's right. There is one. I'm like, hey, I have some blow for you. Oh, God. Yeah, so, so so Mark puts his hand down the garbage disposal. This character we barely know who has, like, one line of dialogue yes. gets, like, the most elaborate set piece death in the movie. This movie should have been called Red Herring the Movie yeah. because yeah. all of these deaths are so much more elaborate than they need to be. Like... The kid at the dentist's office, there's like three oh, or man, four that's... instances. Well, it's it's like Miss <laughs> Luton's death scene is like 15 minutes long in the first movie. Yeah, I feel like this was the the movie where the franchise started with like the death, like just being extra. Oh, yeah. yeah. Foreshadowing. I mean, death went into overtime. <laughs> yeah. He just put in the hours for this. Yeah. He's stunting on them. Because they started carrying it on in the in the uh, next movies. They started just getting wilder and wilder yeah. with like, yeah. the, the foreshadowing. Well, is it is it Death being like scampy or is it he just not keeping up? Because like She's a petty bitch. That's all. Death likes to troll. Well, you can get him from the fire. You can get him from the fire. You can get him from the garbage disposal. You can get him from all sorts of things. And then it's just all the spaghetti he tripped on. Right. No, I mean, he, Death is trying. He like closes yeah, he tries. the windows. He's doing his best. <laughs> Death, he's doing his best, guys. He, he tries. I kept imagining Death going like, fuck. <laughs> Look, my favorite moments where Death trolls is when somebody tries to kill themselves. Yes. And it, they're just like, nope. Yes, I do like that. Like, no. Not, not on my fucking terms. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like Death is on the clock, off the clock. Like, right. With the, with the gun, on the clock. With this Death and pretty much all the Deaths in the movie, off the clock. Like, I'll get him eventually. Yeah. Right. Or what if what if Death wasn't even involved with this? What if this is all just them being fucking morons? Like, uh, well, this guy, probably a fucking moron. This guy 100% get, deserves it. This guy was a fucking moron. Yeah. Like, you're mad. Yeah, like, not even looking at your noodles before you put them in the oven. Come on. I'm sorry. that It was so gross. I so <laughs> gross. Really with food like that. That's been sitting out. I'm really weird about, like, food Same. and bacteria. Yes. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love it. No, yeah. It's fucking gross. Yeah. So you're, what, what I'm saying is a parasite probably would have got to him eventually. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, death plays the long game. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't the explosion or the ladder, he would have shit himself to death. Yeah, he would have got <laughs> Ebola for sure. <laughs> Ebola? <laughs> e. coli? You know, one of those food related deaths. <laughs> e. coli, Ebola, whatever. <laughs> one of those E words. <laughs> so it's like death just throwing things at the wall. Like, let's see what sticks. Yeah, death's got a spinning wheel. Yeah. I got eight things right here. Wasn't he doing something in his car like that? Like drugs or drinking? No, or something? That, that was the, the other guy. guy. He wasn't really doing anything, I don't think. I feel like I, I feel like I remember him doing something and like maybe it was I know the other guy was doing the coke hey Brandy they were all doing something <laughs> yeah. they, all, they yeah. were doing their best they were not doing their best <laughs> they were the antithesis of doing your best they were doing the fucking work yeah they did the opposite of that yeah honestly I felt like it was kind of like a long ass anti-drug ad yeah. with yeah. some of the inclusion of that oh if this movie would have ended with them and doing that thing where they fade up from black and it's one of the actors sitting in their chairs on set going hi I'm AJ Cook I'm here to <laughs> talk to you about why you shouldn't smoke weed. <laughs> Don't do coke off your steering wheel. I just noticed my notes um, said it be your own spaghetti. <laughs> and I uh, forgot I wrote that down. It, it do be your own spaghetti sometimes. <laughs> it be your own spaghetti that gets you. It be your own fucking spaghetti. Speaking of death being um, off the clock, on the clock, I think he was off the clock when he let 
a falling brick killed Devin Sawa's character from oh the my, first oh one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you know what they wanted to do? Hmm. They did want to give him a flesh-eating virus. Really? Yeah. That was the original pitch. Yes. Yeah, that was a that was the pitch of how he was going to go. Because remember how careful he was? Mm -hmm. There's no way a brick was going to really get him, you know? A brick. It's crazy. That's the thing about that whole scene in that first movie where he's like, I'm barricading myself in this room. I'm wearing gloves and everything. I'm like, yeah. dude, you can just have a heart attack at any time. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> just live your life, dude. Which goes into at like... Was Allie? Cl yeah, clear. clear. God clear. damn. Whatever. Clear. Cl clear water rivers. She's she's in that padded room. I'm like, something still gets you in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, earthquake. <laughs> uh, the the roof could collapse. Not anything. Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm like, at that point, just kill yourself. Yeah. This picture, this picture of Devin Sawa in in the newspaper, where it's clearly just some PA. Oh yeah. That they like just lay face down on the on the floor, Tyler. We're gonna make you <laughs> make people think you're Devin Sawa. So funny. But like, just so. Did Clear just take a Polaroid of her dead boyfriend? Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of like photos in this movie that are clearly like B-roll shots mm -hmm. from the first film. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. when they show when they show the guy who's like hung in the bathroom, he's like looking at the camera and still pulling at the rope. So the picture would have been taken as he was yep. dying. Yep. Like, right. Yep. So I also I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite pastimes on the internet is to search generic words like the word premonition, premonition on search engines <laughs> and see what I get out of my two billion results. <laughs> and th this is spurred on by the news that Evan died, but none of them met Evan, so yeah. why do they give a shit? Yeah. Right. Oh, you mean Mar Mark? Yeah. <laughs> Well, because at that point, they're trying to connect the dots of like... Who the fuck is Mark? <laughs> of that girl's premonitions yeah, and shit. Yeah, They didn't actually care about him. So we, we go to this religious mom and her son, Mark. Oh, my God. <laughs> and... <laughs> And no, yeah, her comments are like, well, if it's meant for, I'll be in heaven with my kids, yeah. with my family. I'm like, okay, ma'am. I'm like, okay, uh, sit down. <laughs> my one big note about this kid. How old is this kid? Th well, that's one question I have. Yes. A dick. A dick years old. <laughs> I think he's supposed to be like 15, 16, I think. Really? Mm. But he's written like he's eight. Yeah, right. he's written like a toddler. He comes off like 13 or 14. She's like kissing him on the forehead. Yeah, she's tucking him in bed. Especially with the like fucking with the pigeons. I'm like, <laughs> is he 13? I know. Yeah, I didn't know what his deal was. I read that in the screenplay, he was written to be nine years old. Ooh. And uh, they kept aging him up because they couldn't kill a child. Oh, they can't kill a kid. Yeah, you can. You can totally. You totally can. I do it. If there was yeah, watch the blob. If there was a nine year old getting crushed by this glass later, holy shit, <laughs> ten out of ten. But he still had really long arms. <laughs> oh my god, ten out of ten. Oh movie. yeah, back then people would have been mad. Yeah. My one note about this kid though is <laughs> this kid definitely is the type that would say the N word on Xbox Live, Jesus. right? Oh for sure. You're right. Oh one hundred percent. Look at his face. Right? Yeah. Yes. Repeatedly. He has that face. I mean, just look at what he does with these pigeons later on. This kid is a menace. This kid got what was coming to him. Yeah, he was an asshole. <laughs> what was the dentist line about his pants being Oh uncovered? my god. Yeah, he's he's like, hey mom, make sure the dentist doesn't fuck my mouth. Yeah, yeah what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, get this kid out of here. You're 15. Or no, if my yeah, if my pants are undone when he wait when I wake up. We're not paying. Insane. And the mom Mom laughs. Yeah. That's not funny. I'm like, I don't I don't need a pedophile joke in this movie. No, thank <laughs> no. you. That's that's why that kid turned out to be an asshole, because look at his parents. Yeah. That kid is the only one in the movie that I don't think Death even tried to kill. He just got what was coming to him. Like <laughs> yeah. it's it's ridiculous this death, but yeah, he just he just deserved it. So this dentist just has pigeons in his wind gum through the window all the time because they say like not again. Why don't you have curtains? He's like not again. I gotta change this fucking window. <laughs> Granted, um, his little fake out with the mask and the oh the 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 um the module jokes on a blowfish. Oh, that shit was hilarious. Yes, yeah, that <laughs> was a lot. But man, his ass got folded up like an omelet. <laughs> oh my god, that scene was so funny. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is like a a, a red herring movie. Oh god, it was funny. I'm sorry. Pigeons are disgusting. I hate them. <laughs> I know, because the way he folded up like an accordion. <laughs> yeah, he folded his ass up. Oh, well, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I, I want to say, too, we get um, AJ Cook's character. Uh, there's a lot of good imagery in this movie when they try to, because I think... Her in bed, seeing the shadows of the branches yeah, that's good. on her ceiling turning into long hands and fingers is really good. But this is yet another time when she's, that she sees that and then we don't really see her react to it. Yes. Like There's multiple death scenes in this movie where everyone just kind of goes like, 
Oh man, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it, but it's it's very Sam Raimi, oh, like yeah. the, the fingers stretching out on her shoulders. Oh sure, yeah, that's fun. I actually really like. We're talking about it, but the kid in the dentist chair mm-hmm. when the thing falls in his mouth and he's kind of like fading away. Yeah. You see everything like zoom out. I think that's really good. And the tear like coming, the forming in his eye. Yes, and, yeah. But it's it's so few and far between. Yeah. that it's just I don't know. I wish they would have done more of that stuff. They're not going to. No, they're not. <laughs> they never will with this franchise. No. Don't ever have these expectations. <laughs> so I think Claire Rivers. Oh God, I can't even fucking say the name without. Can we just keep calling her Claire? Yeah, yeah Claire. I, I don't give a fuck about her being it's Claire. Claire. It's Claire. I think Claire went to the same asylum that Laurie Strode goes to at the end of, uh, or at the beginning of Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. the same set. It is, it actually. Looks, I looked it up. It looks exactly the same. Uh, also, the uh, the the cabin that Devin Sawa like, holds up in in the first movie, Yeah, that's the cabin Betty White lives in in uh, Lake Placid. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Love it. The more you know. All these connections. We get the scene where she's talking about death is working backwards or some shit that makes no fucking sense. Sure. Yeah, these, where are these rules yeah where are they written backwards i don't know if it's a positive or negative mm. i don't know how i feel about the fact that these movies never explain why these protagonists of these movies have these gifts Visions of premonitions. And yeah yeah they never explain yeah that was always what bothered me about these yeah you know what they could have done mm. that's where tawny todd should have been more prominent he could be like i'm giving these kids the gift of premonition to stop these deaths yeah he would have been more involved well but no then he'll be out of business <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> People are going to die continually. <laughs> like, you want him to go under in this economy? How yeah. dare you? <laughs> You're right. We, we can't we can't stop these small businesses. This is a, this is a mom and pop mortuary he's running. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Walmart mortuary is taking over this town. <laughs> By the way, don't bury me at Walmart mortuary. No, thank you. Walmart mortuary. I don't yeah. want to be rolled back. <laughs> rolling back. This di- yeah, this dentist office scene, I I think it's hilarious. This dentist is so fucking annoyed. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he hates that kid. I mean, everyone does. As we all do. Kid sucks. Yeah, he's a little shit. Yeah, this this kid's like 16 or 17. Go- going on nine. He's, go- he's going <laughs> Not going on 18. But I think this death with the pigeons is so fucking good, dude. Like, well, I mean, pigeons are disgusting, so sure. I hope the glass got some of them, too. This wow. scene was... Uh, <laughs> Shot by John Woo. <laughs> this, oh, or it's uh, Mr. Landis over here. This is an accident, by the way. I don't know if you guys know. This kid's really fucking dead. Helicopters falling, glass p- panes falling. It's all under his wall. So they originally wanted a nine-year-old to die that way? Yeah. 10 out of 10 movie, I'm telling you. I'm wow. telling you. Wow. That's a lot. Well, because this kid gets instant karma. You, he, all that happens is AJ Cook runs in and says, the pigeons, the pigeons. This kid's like... You want me to fuck with the pigeons? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> fuck you. I regret nothing. And this kid folds up like a towel. It's <laughs> so good. Can you share can you share the photo that I sent you of the dummy? Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. Good. I'll see if I can find it. This, this dummy work in this movie is chef's kiss because this kid, yeah, he folds up like an accordion. It's fucking great. It's amazing. <laughs> Nathan sent me a screenshot of this. So I'm gonna see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, if you if you go like frame by frame, this dummy is like uh upset it's like slender man like, <laughs> yeah. proportions it's so weird uh do you send it directly to me nathan or to the group oh there it is yeah, there, there it is. is oh oh no look how long this kid's arms are <laughs> he's got no <laughs> knees he's like cotton from king of the hill <laughs> let me <laughs> let me see if i can open it i killed fitty men <laughs> Fitty pigeons, get it right. Oh uh, yes, yes, I yeah. Fitty pigeons. <laughs> All right, here. Let me see if I can pull out because this deserves to be seen uh, as big as we can. Look at that. <laughs> Look oh at that. no. He's like the old man in RoboCop. <laughs> so did they do that to put all the guts in there? I guess so. That, that's what this this fupa looks like. It's just all guts. <laughs> oh, I guess it's for the folding effect. Yeah, it looks like his his legs are so short and his arms are long. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, no. It's so funny. Those hands are dumb. He looks like... Uh, fucking chubs from happy <laughs> it looks like vecna's hand oh it's it does huge it, it does yeah you know this kid eats absolute shit here <laughs> and it's aj cook no reaction no she doesn't care that this kid's dead the fact that she hasn't been crying since her friends died yeah. is wild to me yeah. yeah yeah no 
no real performance. <laughs> yeah, I I I made a note about that too. I'm like, I know her friends were assholes, but <laughs> you're not gonna mourn at all. Right. I would have been screaming for like the la- next six months. Pretty much. Yeah, no funerals, no funeral scenes in this movie. Like you literally were like front row center for your friend's death. She is busy trying to save lives <laughs> as much as they suck, but yes. still. <laughs> and then. This is when this is when they all decide. Uh, okay, we all need to live together now. Oh, <laughs> oh no. God! Let's let's all move into this apartment, but not before we get the man himself. The le- that elevator scene. No, the legend Tony Todd oh, shows sure. up right here. Yeah, and he's uh he's into some nipple play apparently. Oh yeah, with the tearing out the nipple ring. Hey Brady, when I die, can you make sure the dude does not rip my pieces <laughs> out like that? I would really appreciate that not happening. No, Jen, Jen, don't worry, he won't get to because I already did. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save that precious jewelry. <laughs> All right, make sure my my will to check that off the list that Brady stays away from you, my body. Did you guys see on your copy of the movie that the nipple ring actually getting taken out? Because I think for mine it was just off screen, but I believe it's in there in the unrated version. I feel like it was on the DVD that I okay. saw back in yeah, the day. It, it, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I re- because I remember I still remember seeing it and it was gross. Yeah, I thought I I don't like male men with nipple rings. No, thank you. Wow. I mean, live your life, but <laughs> if, if you're gonna do it, do two. Don't do the one. Yeah. Come on. Oh yeah, do two. Commit. Wow, not the homophobia here. <laughs> the homophobia no i just if you're gonna commit 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 do the thing he likes c- symmetry Sim- exactly i get i get it i get it do both i thought you were saying men shouldn't have them at all no just do both oh okay yeah go for it that's fair you know what would have been great is if this guy got the nipple ring because he won the lottery and it's like that scene from rockstar nathan with mark Wahlberg's nipple ring oh, and we sure. see the whole fucking thing yeah <laughs> oh. That has been great. You're right. That would have been so good. That would have been so good. <laughs> I would have actually loved that. <laughs> and uh, guys, this is where I had a, a fucking crazy uh, revelation. This movie is pro-choice. Explain. Did you guys notice this when they at the gas station and Claire... Claire's talking about how the girl, the pregnant oh, woman line. hasn't given birth yet. So there's no new uh, soul in line. I'm like, oh, she doesn't consider it born until the child is born. She's pro-choice. Interesting. Interesting. Good for her. I'm, I'm going to say death is as well. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's, that's you know, sense yeah, and de- science. Death agrees, apparently. <laughs> Except he doesn't because none of this matters. Yeah, because he wants more kids to kill. That's what he wants. <laughs> So Death is running a daycare, so he needs all the babies. That's the Republican. He doesn't care because he wants that kid to be born first so that he can then kill it. That's what he wants. <laughs> Honestly, when he was like, Death can only be defeated with new life, I thought he was trying to imply that um that girl and a the- A threesome? That's yeah, what he's trying to talk his like way into? he was like looking at them. I'm like, LOL, y'all got fuck now. <laughs> oh, God. He's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> We get to the scene you were talking about, Nathan, where they're all kind of meet up. Uh-huh. I'm surprised this mom even bothers showing up. Sure. Because- I would be inconsolable if my child died in a horrific manner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. You literally just watched your one kid die. Splat! Not even die, he got smushed. Yeah, yeah, he got packed the fuck out. Her reaction is the most realistic because everyone seems to be super chill about the situation. Yeah. And she's like, bawling. Yeah. I'd be inconsolable. I'd be dead. I would find a way to kill myself. Yeah. Or I'd be setting world records for trying to drown myself and death not being allowed to take me. And I'd just be underwater for the rest of my life. I'd be like Jason at the end of every one of those Friday movies. Just still there. That's true. You you have talked about this a few times. Yeah. Granted, a lo- it, like the morning is very unrealistic in a lot of the horror movies. Yes. But hers is real. And then... Her whole situation in the elevator Oof. wrecked me. Oof, sure. Oh, God, yeah. That was... And you know, that actually happened to someone. Yeah, in Resident Evil. <laughs> yep. No, in real life. <laughs> what do you mean? Resident Evil is real life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but her whole, oh, God. I And first of all, can we talk about the guy with the hook? Yes. Yeah. What's his fucking oh, deal? Oh, my God. When he was sniffing her, <laughs> cool. ew. Why? <laughs> I'm, go- I'm like, can this guy die too? Because that's gross. Like, oh, sir. You know who that should have been? That should have been Robert England. Oh, <laughs> that would have been so good. That would have been funny. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah. No, he was giving me real, like, focus group from I Think You Should Leave vibes. <laughs> <laughs> A great steering <laughs> wheel that doesn't fly off. Yes. <laughs> but no, this, before that, though, when they're in the apartment and they're discussing, oh, death's got a plan or whatever, 
And Eugene is like, this is crazy, people. Come on. Yeah. I'm like, dude, two people have died already, and you're the one who said yeah. all of this would happen. Yeah. You're the one. No, yeah. It got too real for him. He had to leave. Yeah. I will give him credit that, like, it does kind of look sus when it's just, like, you are gathered by all these white people. Yeah. To talk <laughs> that's about, like, true. Like, death. It's like, all right. This sounds like, I don't know if I trust this. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you, y'all invited me over and asked me to fix up your house to make it quote unquote <laughs> death proof. And talk about quote unquote cheating death. Y'all sound insane. Uh -huh. Oh my God, Nathan, for your um, bit on, oh, that's a scary movie, uh, alternate title, Death, death proof. proof. Yes. 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 Absolutely. This low rent Ashton Kutcher, uh, I think his character's name is Mark, um, him <laughs> freaking out in this closet. <laughs> It's some dude where's my car shit. Yeah. Like, it looks like, you ever see the Tupperware commercial where all the things falls out of the, the uh, cabinet? Yeah, yeah those dumb infomercials. That's what he looked like. He's like a dad in any of those commercials late nights where he's like tangled up in the blinds and uh -huh. stuff because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. this, this looks like a man with hooks, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, he saw the guy with hooks, so he did something yeah. for the people. Th that's the thing. Why does he get the gift all of a sudden? Right. Yeah, I don't get that. Never explain. AJ Cook has been seeing like projections of pigeons in windows <laughs> and this guy gets to see a creepy shadow. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, not that surprising seeing a pigeon a, a pigeon at the window. Just yeah, just I mean that's just there. <laughs> but they also all of the deaths have been like horrible accidents, and yet every time they see one of these premonitions, they think it's a murderer. Yeah. So they they call her and they're like, "A guy with hook is gonna kill you." Yeah. And then later on in the movie, they're like, "This nurse is gonna kill you." <laughs> yeah, they're like the pigeons are gonna kill you, like it's fucking Alfred Hitchcock. Her first instinct is just murder. Murder. Just crime. Like just just know you're about to die. That's all. Do you think the man with hooks was a nod to Candyman since Tony Todd's in this movie? Oh, I doubt it. You don't think they thought about that maybe i don't know i mean what else could the dude have a box of because that's a weird fucking thing for him to be doing just yeah this fucking um, mannequin lover <laughs> maybe if he was holding all those hooks and dressed like a beekeeper then yeah. i'd be like okay <laughs> this is clear <laughs> clearly a nod just covered in honey yeah so he's in the hooks and smelling hair yep got it this dude is in and he looks at eugene like you want you want some of this you want to get in on this <laughs> eugene is just like bro what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> this dude is like a walking jim jarmusch movie like, it's <laughs> <laughs> this elevator death is brutal, though. Yeah. I remember this is the one besides the pile up sticking with me. Oh, it's so bad. The way the fact that like it started out so slow, I was just like, oh, my God, yeah. it was torture to watch or like screaming. Yeah. yeah. Like imagine just like feeling like it, like snatching your neck. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Well, that's the thing, too, about most of the deaths in this movie is the people that it happened to almost always have it happen to themselves like yeah. the guy threw out the spaghetti that's his fuck up mm -hmm. this kid fucked with the pigeons that's his fuck fuck up this woman freaks this out poor lady about her hair being snagged uh, and i'm like you ran out the elevator yeah yeah all you had to do was just like unhook your hair exactly like, you did the most eugene's right there he could have helped <laughs> although i understand because that man with the hooks was fucking weird true yeah but i mean you ever been like in a panic situation like that and yeah. just like you just freak out that's true but like to sprint out of the elevator and then try to sprint back in i didn't i don't know because it is terrifying when when men are being creepy to you no also. no no for sure i'm not blaming women here i'm not blaming like victim blaming oh, but... sounds like you are you're decapitated <laughs> your fault you know what guys i'll see you later i gotta go <laughs> go figure some shit out all right you got me too out of here Wait, so no head <laughs> no, shut up. Uh, no bazinga head. that's fucking good before eugene just witnessed all that uh -huh. and then you know he goes back into the oh yeah he pulls his gun out real fucking quick no <laughs> oh, I, wait, wasn't that the cop's gun? Yeah. Uh, maybe. He took a cop. That's it was. Oh. It, it is. Cause, I missed that. Because the cop is like, yeah, I had it loaded. I just, I'm just like, what What did they like plan to have the logic be behind that for the, the movie? I thought they were leaning into the racism of this black guy. Of course he would have a gun. Because I no. didn't see him snatch <laughs> it from. Fully, I, that's what I thought. No. No, I, no it, it was definitely the cop's gun. But I'm like, no cop is walking around with blanks. Right. right. So. And that's a revolver. I don't think cops walk around with revolvers either. That too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they walk around with the hand that was, that's, yeah. that's his weekend gun. Leave oh, him alone. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the weekend gun. Of course. That's the weekend one. Like, bro, what are you, a cowboy? <laughs> I don't, so what the rules are, so Eugene tries to shoot himself, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uses every round, but that's like, no. Yeah. That's a freebie. Yeah, no, death is like OCD and has to kill them in the right order. Yes. No, that's a free kill, man. Like, come on. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, but it's just like, come on. Death is just going to full on stop bullets. Yeah, right. yeah like that's. 
I don't know. I was like, this is a little much. And then later on, Death has no problem killing Clear and TC at the same t- Eugene at the same time. Well, yes. that was a two for that was a two for one deal. That's yeah. true. Because Eugene put in a Death put in a lot of work to kill Eugene. Like, well, she's here, so <laughs> Death used his Cole's cash. <laughs> yeah, and then Claire, and then Claire, he was just like, I've been waiting on your ass. Right, exactly. Like, oh yeah, you. You're He's dead. like, bitch, when I catch you. <laughs> it's the same thing with those with those Saw movies. Is I just wish I just wish once mm. someone just said nope and just killed themselves and just like. <laughs> And, yeah. and Jigsaw sitting there like, oh, I didn't play it for that. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to go through the toilet? <laughs> no, I'm not playing your pranks. I'm going to kill myself. That's what you thought would happen with Eugene. Because uh-huh. like, if it, cause like, if I was in this scenario, I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to off myself then if it's going to, like, if it's about to be my turn. That's a good question. Okay. If you guys were in this scenario and you tried. This is what I was going to ask earlier. You, yeah. you tried the gun trick and it didn't work. What's your next attempt at suicide? Like, what are you trying? I don't know. I would be freaked the fuck out at that point. Because for me, I think jump off. I think j- jump off a very tall building, and then death catches you. Oh, see, I oh, thought what would God. happen. <laughs> I would be pissed. That would be insane. I thought what would happen is I live. Like I just bounce off the ground and I'm. You all- break all your bones, but you're fine. Yeah, yeah like- I mean, you could just come up here in New York and just jump in front of the train and then piss oh, everybody God. off trying to go to work. That's true. You could do that. Like somebody always does. Yeah. So you want to? So you want to inconvenience people before you die? Wow. I don't want to inconvenience people. I want to prove a point. Look, people do it every fucking day, and I hate them. No, no, I. I <laughs> I want to prove a point. I want everyone else around me to see that I'm not fucking crazy. I tried with all my might to kill myself and it just didn't work. I sat on a grenade. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Pull a grenade out, sit down. <laughs> Stick it up your ass, pull the pin. Yeah. Do you think like death would be impressed? I think he would be impressed by it. He's like, wow, I didn't think of that. Wow. <laughs> you know what death would do with the grenade though? If you put it up your ass and you pulled the pin, he would just, nothing would happen. Mm. And then he'd wait till you were all alone and then get you. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, you know what? I'll let you have this one because that was creative. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, you got that one. Like, you get to die this time. Good job. Yeah. So yeah, the rules to me just don't make sense because no. Eugene tries to off himself and Death is like, mm, no, I don't like that. Yeah, that aspect pissed me off. This is where they all have their conversation about figuring out that they all survived death because yes. of the deaths in the previous movie. Yeah. And then Clear says, that's why death is working backwards. And I'm like, don't say that like it makes sense. Yeah, like, like you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. of course. Of course. So again, are these rules written somewhere? Did Tony Todd tell them? Like, yeah. it just seems like they're talking. But it also... It also makes no sense because if that's the case, why isn't that happening in the first movie? Why yeah. are they just now deciding to do it? Right. Tony Todd should have been like, here's the manual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh- oh, shit. I forgot I had this. He just pulls out of his pocket. <laughs> so, yeah, to me, they're just kind of making it up. Yeah. yeah. So after he tries to off himself, then they go on a where are they going? So they're going to go try to get the pregnant woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because they they think. Because she's just like, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. They think Tony Todd's lying about, oh. The only way to prevent death is for new life to be created. And so they think, oh, well, there was a pregnant woman that was in the premonition. So if we go get her and she has the baby, that'll stop death. All right. Sure. Whatever. (laughs) But so they get in this car accident. They don't need to be there for the baby to be born. Are they just going to try to protect her? Yeah, that was what I was confused about, too. Is like, okay, so when the baby gets there, like, what are y'all going to do? Right. You don't know her. Y'all just going to be here for this strange woman's birth. Y'all just going to pass the baby around. Who doesn't fucking know you. (laughs) AJ Cook's like, I'm pulling that baby out myself. (laughs) That's the point we should make, too. She does not show it to the police station earlier on. So she has... No connection with any of these people. Right. Yeah. That's why she was like, who the fuck were they? Yeah. Right. I love that line. That's so funny. When she's like, who are you? I was like, I was like, this pregnant lady is one of the few people in this movie that have sense. Uh-huh. They, they get in this car accident Ooh. and somehow there's a news van already on the scene. Who called them? <laughs> I don't know. The, the news van that almost runs over Mickey from Shameless. Yes. Hey, man. Leave Mickey alone in his Limp biscuit shirt. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right? So this, um, this discount Ashton Kutcher guy, Mark, he's got the right <laughs> idea because he, he there's this car accident and then um, Eugene has to go to the hospital. There's the other girl that almost has the PVC pipe go through her head. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. And he's standing there talking to AJ Cook, and he says, when I die, will you throw out all my porn? I don't want to disappoint my mom. Yeah. yeah. No, he's right. That's an amazing idea. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what you need. I like that. I think that's a good moment. It's Why? funny. After you're dead, what does it matter? Well, it's it's the 2003 version of, can you clear my browser history? Right. <laughs> but you don't want to like, shame your family if you're 
if you're in the weird shit they don't have to tell anyone else they could just see that and then just tell nobody mm-hmm. i gotta be honest if death is stalking me i don't give a shit if my mom knows i watched porn and did coke i don't <laughs> that's care that's what i'm saying like who cares <laughs> yeah. there's a lot worse things there's a shame level to it mm-hmm. so in the accident mm-hmm. the cigarette girl is pinned in the car right mm-hmm. yes cat i think is her name yes Which, whatever i don't care <laughs> mark yeah <laughs> no i think she was smoking a dejaro <laughs> not even a cigarette she's fancy better than me i'm like i haven't seen that shit since high school uh-huh. so she's pinned in the car eugene goes awesome and this is also after the fact they had the conversation about being connected to flight 180 yeah. on mm-hmm. some level right yeah mm-hmm. the, the rules still don't make sense to me no, no. Okay. No, I don't get it. And here's the thing, too. She, she's she got this PVC pipe right there. Oh, God. And then the, the, the fire department shows up. They bring out the jaws of life or whatever. I, I don't know. If, if this PVC pipe was behind my head like this, clearly supposed to kill me, I would just kind of, like, lean far, far <laughs> away from it. Because... She pulls out a cigarette. She asks the guys. I'd be like, can you guys like remove this shit before you start? Right. Like, real. This is yes. first. Can you please do something? Like, do you not see this shit right behind my head? She's so inconvenienced. No, <laughs> she is fully, she's murdered by this emergency responder. Yeah, it's so it's fucking funny. It's almost like funny. he did it on purpose. <laughs> That's wrongful death. Dude, he had an attitude in his tone. Yeah. No, no, he no, smiled. When he responded to her. That's why I'm like, this guy wanted to kill her. No, 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 no. I disagree. That she becomes a Karen at this moment. Can you be a little quieter with this thing? <laughs> yeah, I'll put her on silent mode, he says. Well, yeah, that's why he has an attitude back. Like, I get it. Because she, wa- she was being a dick. But it, it, this is a uh, this is a high-stress situation. You would not, like, his response yeah. is like, let me hit this car harder. <laughs> yeah, like, let me just turn it down. But, but this is the equivalent of Rick in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is, can we do anything about the heat from the flamethrower? <laughs> Rick, it's a flamethrower. Uh-huh. Yeah. What do you want the... What the fuck do you want him to do? So he put all his force into the jaws of life and killed this woman. Yeah. He didn't do anything. He did exactly. What... <laughs> That's my point. Like... Well, he shoved her back into it. I love that there's you hear a guy in the background go, God, <laughs> so good. And he said and he set off the airbags that shoved. Her. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. I, I will give him some grief because, yes, if that was me, I'd be like. Lady, we're going to get you out, but first, let's do something about this PVC pipe. It is precariously <laughs> behind your fucking head in the shape of a dagger. Mm-hmm. So that was also practical, and that might be one of my favorite deaths. It's really good. good. Because it, it scared me the first time I saw it. It's so sudden. Oh, it's yeah. such a good jump scare. Like, I legit jumped when I was, like, a kid and I saw that because I wasn't – I didn't think. I'm like, oh, yeah, that pipe isn't going to yeah. do anything. Yeah. Oh. No, that's what I'm saying. It's a red herring. This movie is full of red herrings. Yep. And speaking of that, we get maybe the most rude Goldberg of, of of all these deaths yes. with this weird maze that this gas is going to oh. to eventually blow up this thing and trisect uh discount action kutcher mm-hmm. and which is maybe the craziest death in this whole movie guys i'm gonna yeah. i mean death went into overtime again yeah it was it was my favorite for sure yeah like being sliced by a fence it's really good it's really good a random fence flying in the air yeah. like come on so good another practical so good yeah. yeah it's like the cranked up version of sean william scott's death in the first movie yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. so good i forgot about that yeah so good that was like a piece from a train right yes right. <laughs> yeah yeah that like sort of decapitated him yeah. And it's so funny because no one cares that these people are dead. Nope. No one reacts <laughs> There's at bodies all. bodies everywhere. <laughs> just so much death. And the craziest shit you've ever seen. Yeah, they're just like, we got to get we gotta get this pregnant lady's baby to square up with death. Yes, right. and the craziest shit you've ever seen. The PVC pipe with the airbag, this guy getting blown away by a fence. Like, it's so bananas. <laughs> Again, the fact that no one is screaming. Yeah, I was like, de- yeah, death is just like, all right, I got to beat these people to the punch before they go get that baby. Mm-hmm. So let me just kill them all. Before they kill themselves, I'll kill them. <laughs> yeah, like, let me kill them all in one sitting. And then Mickey's dad is like, borrow my truck. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> How is no one just flipping out and screaming? I know. I know. It's like, you not only see these people die, but in the most, like, gruesome ways. Death is like Thanos put on the Infinity Gauntlet for the first time. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, can you imagine if Death had an like the infinity gauntlet? It was like fuck it. And, and that's what it is. It's it's <laughs> Thanos being like, fine, I'll do it myself. Death is Thanos. I think Death could have taken a back seat in this one and all these deaths would have happened exactly the same way. <laughs> just, just yeah. FYI. So yeah, they, they go to this hospital where this woman's given birth, and there's this uh that's the same hospital that Eugene's going to. Um I guess he's got like a collapsed lung or something. 
And there's a premonition that Asia Cook has where she thinks this doctor, for whatever reason, is going to try to murder this woman while she's giving birth. Okay. Because that's what doctors do. This is when the movie really goes downhill for me. <laughs> Here. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know what this doctor that went to school for years and paid thousands of dollars to do? Yeah. She's going to kill her patients. Yes. That's what doctors do. Look, by the time it gets to this, and she's, like, still going out of her way to be like, oh, let's cheat death. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but all the people that you were trying to do that with literally died on the way there. Yeah. What are you trying to do it for? now right <laughs> they're all dead now she does th this woman does give birth to this child they think they've beaten it i think tc carson's really good in this scene yes. where like he sees the news report and he starts tearing up oh, so he still can't breathe or call out for help that and was yes. stressful and it's the one death that feels less like an accident but i think he's so great in this scene well here's uh, two things about that one we haven't really talked about it, but when AJ Cook has these premonitions, mm -hmm. it's very Raven Simone and that's so Raven. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it is. Yeah. It's collagen, I can see. <laughs> oh my God. So, Eugene's death is the saddest yeah. Yeah. in this movie for sure, because it's, it's almost unfair. Oh, yeah. no. Decapitated lady was pretty sad. True. Yeah. That bummed but, me out. I mean, that was just fucked up. Yeah. If anything, the nurses are to be blamed for this one, too, because yeah. this dude is flatlining. And no one comes in there. Yeah, yeah. Like, why is nobody like in attendance? So wrongful death suits for everyone. Yeah, there is class action lawsuits all across this <laughs> city. Sure. Yeah, I'm suing everyone. Yeah, <laughs> the town is gonna get shut down. Yeah, they left him alone for a while for death to like come up with all these contraptions for his like wires and shit. So death was like, one way or the other, you're fucking dying tonight. Yeah, I don't care how, but it's happening. And it's just crazy because <laughs> it's like if like I know Claire happened to be the one that opened the door but Dude, come on anybody could have opened that door okay True. so death gets a buy one get one here with eugene and claire i'm gonna still call her claire yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fucking claire when she opens this door i love that she becomes a crispy critter even before this explosion <laughs> happens because you see her burning before the explosion happens it's great she like has no idea what is happening yeah by the time she falls to the ground she's bones yeah there's also a there's a dummy of her that flies yes. through the air that <laughs> yes it's the camera it's insane that shit was funny she's like the dummy in lethal weapon 2 that's doing the front flips on the on the pool diving <laughs> <bar>. <laughs> so good okay so so we have this hospital that's half on fire now mm -hmm. this lady did she already have the baby yeah. yes it, this turns into a resident evil movie real quick this Jesus. hospital has exploded <laughs> Well, see, she's not like, I'm going to steal this ambulance. I'm like, don't do that. Yes. <laughs> so she or she thinks, oh, what it is, is I have to die. And then question mark? Because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this was so dumb. How she anticipates being the quote unquote new life that has to occur here. I don't I don't get this. Yeah. But she tries to steal this ambulance. Did you guys notice anything special about this ambulance? No. no. Uh, there's enough air fresheners in this ambulance for about <laughs> 17 <laughs> different cars. <laughs> so many air fresheners in this ambulance. I mean, it is an ambulance. You got a lot of sick and dead people going through there. So Sometimes it stinks in there. I don't know. That's yeah. true. Maybe that's an in-universe reason. It's a lot of sick and dead people going through yeah. there. So yeah, it probably smells like ass. That's a good point. Yeah, there's fluids. It's gross. Fair point. It smells like Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment in there. Oh, sure. What does it smell like with all those different scents compared? Competing. It's got to smell like nothing. Pine trees and flesh. I, just, no, I know it smells crazy as fuck in there. Uh, the new scent from Febreze. <laughs> <laughs> Pine trees and flesh. <laughs> so yeah, she goes, she drives off the bridge in this ambulance. I think the cop rescues her, I'm guessing, and resuscitates her. I don't I kind of was not paying attention at this point. She's dead for like a minute, which I don't know how that resets everything. Yeah. Also, she stole an ambulance and there's no like cops after her. Well, she's a white woman in the 2000s. It doesn't matter. Right. I, was, I was literally about to say like if she was black, that wouldn't have happened. Yes. With a savior complex. Yeah. The cop wasn't going to rat her out. This cop who is dead eyed the whole fucking movie. <laughs> this guy's got nothing going on. Yeah. yeah, this Dudley Do-Right looking motherfucker. <laughs> Dudley Do-Right. Yeah, with that stupid hat. I mean, that's that's accurate for this Canadian-ass movie that, that we're definitely filming in for this one. <laughs> he had more reaction to his coffee spilling than people dying. Yeah. So she she yeets herself into the water, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And then dies? she quote unquote, I guess she goes like technically brain dead is the idea. And then they bring her back and they're like, oh, that did it. You stopped it. Everything's good. After everybody else already died. <laughs> Wait, so she's brain down and comes, she comes back and it's fine? I guess. I'm not saying it makes sense. Her and the <laughs> cop are the only survivors. It's like everybody else died already. <laughs> so do you think death just shrugs and be like, maybe next time? Yeah. Oh, well, foiled again. <laughs> uh, shucks. Like, I don't know what he does. Like, well, 
I'll get them on that Ferris wheel, I guess. Right. <laughs> and then we get to the last scene of the movie. Uh, oh, God. Why are they friends with this family now? Uh, yeah. So the farm, I guess, that they, they crashed in earlier with Eugene and, and old girl. Mm-hmm. So wait, there's on the farm, there's two dead bodies and property damage. Yes. <laughs> So much death and destruction happened on my property. Do you want to come over for a barbecue? <laughs> right. Yeah. How was your summer? I was like, how did they even like connect with these people right. in yeah. that way? Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So, so there. Th- we forgot to mention that before. Um, I think it's either AJ Cook or Ali Larder. It's fine. It's the same. <laughs> are going to get killed at this car accident scene on the farm. This kid from Shameless <laughs> notices the gas pouring out of the car and tackles her before she can get injured. And that's when Discount Ashton Kutcher gets killed. So he kind of saves her. Wait, so now the rules say if you save someone, now you have to be involved? Sort of. Well, see, that's the thing. At, at the end of the first movie, Ali Larder gets the visions for one moment. Okay. Yeah. Saves Devin Sawa. All right. He saves the other guy. It kills the other guy. Uh-huh. And it, so it just sort Who's of, next? There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. No. There's no rhyme or reason. It's random. No. I, I texted Dustin. <laughs> And today I was like, I'm rewatching the second half of the movie because I don't understand the rules. No, nope. oh, yeah. No, I think I think it's a fool's errand to try and understand. That's why I'm like, it really went downhill towards the end. Yeah. I So this this kid that saved her earlier, um, Mark, he <laughs> goes to the barbecue, to the grill to get more food. And then the dad or the mom, I can't remember, mentions, oh yeah, so and he saved so and so. And they're like, what? And then this <laughs> <laughs> this grill Car gets annihilated. This by the grill car. explodes and this dummy goes into a thousand pieces. It's great. Yeah. Oh my god. That shit was hilarious. And then the the kid's arm falls on the mom's plate. <laughs> Directly on the plate. <laughs> Literally serves up his kid's arm to And then <laughs> the sickest needle drop into credits. Like then they some new metal. It's new metal all the way. Yeah. Yeah, by that end, I was like, they're just trolling the audience now. When did uh, that Drowning Pool song come out? Because that would have been the perfect <laughs> oh, fucking yeah. which one? The let the, the body... one. Don't don't ask me which <laughs> one. <laughs> You're right. Uh, it was How this year you? because it was on the Jason X soundtrack. Everyone knows the Drowning Pool song. Oh god. Uh, one. Nothing's wrong with me. Yeah. Two. Nothing's wrong with me. So now that that's that's the end of the movie. Thank what god. a rock and roll way to fucking go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to the recommendations, guys. I recommend this movie. I think it's fun as fuck. Sure. Yeah. It's even better with a group watch. I but agree. man, man, is it fun. It, it's the most fun out of all of these movies to me. Yeah. yeah. Bar none. And it's not a good movie. No, but no, no. Boy, no. howdy, I had a good time. <laughs> uh, yes. And I don't think we need to do a ranking, but for me, it's 2-1 and then the rest. Like, I don't care about the rest at all. See, I say 1-5. Two, then I don't care about the others. Okay, so this is right in the middle for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the bar is not <laughs> sure and buried. Sure, sure, that's fine. Sure, but you know, they made a movie. I'm very proud of them. They sure did. <laughs> they did it. I pressed play, and it played all the way through. <laughs> they get a gold star. They tried. <laughs> I didn't stop it, so you know mm-hmm. that was a thing. But you know, for the 2000s, as a kid getting into horror, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I think it's fun. I have fun with this movie every time I put it on. It's not very scary, but it is pretty gory. And the deaths, there's not a bad one. The, the worst one to me is is the spaghetti kid one. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's not bad, but it's compared to the others. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it was kind of anticlimactic compared to the others. Spaghetti kid. <laughs> spaghetti kid. Spaghetti kid. It'd be your own spaghetti. <laughs> While we're here. Oh, yeah. He tripped on mom's spaghetti. While we're here... um. What's everyone's favorite kill? What's the best kill of the movie? Oh, uh, Rory's. Who's Rory? Who the fuck is Rory? Uh, the guy who got sliced by the fence. Oh, what the fuck is Juice? <laughs> the cokehead who gets sliced. Oh, you're talking about Mark, the guy that gets it. Oh, okay, no, Rory, with the fence. No, Rory, the guy who gets sliced by the the fence. The fence. The cokehead guy. That's like, don't let my mom see yeah, my yeah. porn collection. Discount Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mine was probably PVC pipe because it scared me oh, so much as a kid and I wasn't ready. It's good. It's a good death. Ooh, I wasn't ready for that one. It's very inventive. It's very inventive. I like that death a lot. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Logs. That's Did mine. You mention, were you going to mention logs? That's my number one. The cop and the premonition. Well, can we count that because it's not a real death? It's a premonition. Yeah. 
I would. I'll allow it. Okay, that's mine then. <laughs> yeah, my, mine's mine's the barbed wire. Uh, slice them up again. It's good. That's a good one. So no one's gonna go for uh, the uh, elevator because that was. I think that's the most haunting one to me. It's the one besides the logging truck that I remember the most in this movie, just because elevator deaths weren't a huge thing in movies at that point, and mm-hmm. that one stuck with me. Because it was two years before this, or three years before this, when Resident Evil did it, and you didn't see it, mm. but it was an elevator. Uh, decapitation and mm-hmm. this one you get to see the whole the crunching noises and everything Ooh. it's it's effective it's yeah. very yeah. effective it's yeah it's well done mm-hmm. you know that's one thing i felt the death yes i like yeah i actually did feel them yeah like when watching it Ugh. yeah i feel like that was why i liked it like growing up was like it was one of those things where it's like yeah if you wanted to see a horror movie where you could see cool deaths that was the go-to a hundred percent yeah well, all right, is there any other thing we want to talk about before we get to all the uh, the segments here at the end? Anything we missed? Nah. All good? I think we nailed it. Have we? <laughs> I think we figured out death's design. Uh, no, no, the rules are not clear. So, Claire. There are no rules. The rules are not clear. Death is, death is just chaos. There's no rules. <laughs> mm. Well, much like this show, we also have no rules. But I'm going to go ahead and go into the next segment, which is Prop Cop. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, Prop Cop, is where we look at all the different props in the movie Final Destination 2, Mm -hmm. and we each pick one for ourselves to take as our own personal property. Nathan, let's start with you. What prop do you want from Final Destination 2? Uh, I I cheated again and found myself uh, coveting someone's wardrobe in this one. (laughs) Okay, what can I guess? Yeah, go for it. Mm, I'm probably wrong. Okay. But... Is it the lottery winner kids jacket? No. No, I I want all of TC Carson's clothes. Oh, like his turtlenecks, <laughs> his, his, his <laughs> jackets, his turtlenecks, his glasses. Yeah. He's a smooth looking dude. The swap. <laughs> he is a sharp motherfucker. Yeah. He looks like he needs to be teaching art in high school and listening to jazz. Yes. <laughs> he really does. Wait, he said he was a teacher. Right. He yeah. is. He yeah, did he say did he, was mention a he was a teacher. Yeah. He looks like a very classy teacher. Yeah. You know, he's got like Coltrane on when you go oh, over to his place. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, or Marvin Gaye. Yeah. 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 I see that, yeah. I like it. All right. Uh, Brandy, how about you? Is there a prop from this movie that you want? Maybe like one of the hooks in that guy's uh, box. <laughs> Damn, that was going to be mine. That's good. You know what? You can take the whole basket. Whole you don't basket. have to take just one. Yeah. <laughs> just one hook. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll just have this whole box of hooks. Uh, Jen, did you have anything else, sir? Oh, man. I have a couple. Okay. So let's hear them. That's, I just want to take the spaghetti to throw it away. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. It just makes me want to gag. You want to clean up the set. You want to be a PA. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to get it so I can throw it in the trash. And then probably... No, we didn't see the nipple. That's in the deleted scene. You want you the want nipple? Right? <laughs> just a severed nipple. Give me that nipple. I want that... P- I want the uh, prosthetic nipple. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. All right. No, mainly, yeah, I just want to just clean up that guy's house, which just really stresses me out. I, I hear you. That house is disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, oh, God. I'm like, sir. Oh. Just just burn that whole house down. <laughs> Start over. Well, he did. He yeah, did. Well, yeah. So, yeah, that's <laughs> it deserved to be. I want to take, uh, take the tank of nitrous oxide from the dentist's office because I'm trying to get fucked up. Oh, uh, my no, God. No. <laughs> I, wa- I was waiting on somebody to say some form of drugs that they had in this movie. <laughs> no, that's not my real answer. My real answer is I want that old school iMac that the lottery winner guy yeah. has. Cause that thing, oh, hell yeah. I thought the same thing. That thing will fetch a high price if it's unopened. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> well, all right. Let's talk about bit part, which is, of course... The extras, all of the unnamed characters, all these side characters, and there's a couple in this movie. Well, like the homeless lady. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Which which extra, which bit part would you like to have in this movie? Ooh. Well, Brandy, is that yours? Are you the, the pigeon lady <laughs> with the cans? Yeah, I'll be her, yes. <laughs> that scares these fucking kids, yes. She has one job, which is to hold the cans, and to hold the bag right side up, and she holds it upside down. Can't do that. And to, and to slam into this glass. That's true. Jen, what about you? Uh, bit part? I want to be the guy with the jaws of life. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Yes. That's a good one. Got that, he has that bass in his voice like he's not going to save her life. Oh, yeah. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me hear you say the line. Let me hear, because we're going to do a casting real quick. <laughs> let me hear you say, sure, I'll put it on quiet mode. Yeah, Jen, fucking audition. I'm not going to do that. I work in retail. <laughs> no, you got, no, if you want the part, you got fucking audition. I probably had the same level of attitude. You know what? Here, I'll audition for it. I'll put it on quiet mode. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. And then murders a woman. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a woman. Did that not come across? Oh, 
Uh, Nathan? Um, I want to be the guy. We didn't even talk about this scene. The guy in the elevator with oh, Rory God. who's just like, don't touch my face. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, with the dog shit on his shoe. Such a weird scene. <laughs> Wait, did that guy have something on his face or was that dude just being on drugs? I have no idea. It was so strange. I, I don't know what that scene was supposed to be. He's like, oh, yeah, let me get it for you. I'm like, was that, was that supposed to be like, is he gay? No, he's I, not gay. I don't know. I don't know what that scene is supposed to do. I don't know. There was just some weird uh, levity yeah. in the middle of this murder murder movie okay yeah it's so strange i want to be the truck driver drinking beer that oh. <laughs> AJ at like 9 a.m i'm having a good time oh, yeah that shit was fucking egregious like this is your fucking job and you're drinking you don't have to see his face at all so i'm on set i'm just i'm just a silhouette drinking beer that's all i have to do <laughs> yeah it's a good role it's a good role yeah. Well, encourage her to put her seatbelt on that she did not have when she got in the car. That's still a great bit of comedy to me because there is such a long pause when she goes, oh, real responsible, and then puts the seatbelt on. <laughs> did no one want to be the kid with the trucks? I thought about it. <laughs> me too. Yeah. I thought about well, it. Well, I think we're all a little aged out of that role. That's Mally. <laughs> That's Matt. Wait, is he? Did that kid die? I um, hope so. I don't think you see him. Uh, He was in the accident, so. Did the school bus dudes die? Oh, that would be good, good to see. Yeah. Yeah, all those guys, those jocks coming out yeah yeah i think it's safe to assume that like if they didn't pass too far from it they probably died no, true. they do say that there's like 18 deaths, 18 18 deaths. deaths. Yeah. something like that yeah okay a school bus would certainly attribute to a good number of that yeah yeah okay all right well ladies and gentlemen we're here yeah the moment the reason for the season <laughs> silver linings Ooh. Yeah. so who would like to volunteer to go first uh, i'll go okay uh, Clear's not running anymore. <laughs> I mean, she can't. Yeah, yeah cause death she's one. Because <laughs> she's got no legs. <laughs> yeah, no, she's dead. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say say one. Mm -hmm. And it's we don't really get a whole lot of closure on this, but Isabella gave birth to her baby, and they're both okay. Yeah, and they're not involved in this bullshit. Pretty much. Of, yeah. I know, from her perspective, this movie is why. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, I like, I like her. It's like, how many people died trying to get to me for what reason? Yeah, for I'm like, why do y'all want my baby? You fucking weirdos. I would love to see this movie redone from her perspective. Yeah. Oh, it's a horror movie about a bunch of people trying to get her baby. <laughs> oh, that's a good re way to reboot this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brandy, what about you? Do you have a silver lining? Um, <laughs> Silence. <laughs> She's putting her seatbelt on. That's why. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that uh, I, I guess that this was like my favorite one from the franchise. Oh, there you go. That's a meta silver lining. Yeah, because it set up the lore. The movie's not total garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it was. Well, I, well, I'll say it. It gave us all. A reason to be cautious when we started learning how to drive. Yep. Yeah, maybe the real final destination is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. That died? Yeah, sure. I have one more silver lining to contribute. Okay, this will be Mally's. We'll, yeah. we'll attribute it to him. Go ahead. Uh, Bloodworth is staying in business. Yeah. Plenty of extra bodies coming in. Yeah. Tony Todd's going to be busy. No more Walmart corporations coming to take these bodies. <laughs> we got to contribute these small businesses in these trying times, everybody. Yeah, we're all in this together. They're taking our corpses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jen, what about you? I just don't drive behind logs. That's the silver lining. Ever. <laughs> Like we, we, this was a lesson, a lesson to be learned. Yeah, that's what. It, yeah, that's what I'm like it gave us all insight on what not to do before we even started learning how to drive. Anytime. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, okay, cool. I see this on the road. I know immediately. Mm, yeah. Okay. This movie stuck with me. Pass by this shit. It is a testament to the legacy of this movie. Like, not a lot of movies change the cultural like my like. Say what you will about the movie and like its impacts and everything or like its quality and, and this franchise as a whole. That is something we all came away from, which is logging trucks are fucking scary. The highway is scary. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with Jaws did with the beach. And like I said, Psycho did with the with the showers. Like not a lot of movies, especially in the horror franchise, have that, you know, that attribution to it. So, yeah, it's iconic in that way. Yep. exactly. Well, how about this? Let's say our listeners watched Found a Destination 2. And that ending with a kid being blown up, another kid death. Let's say that that left people in a, in a sour state and they need another movie, a double feature, yeah. a pick me up movie to, to re, uh, alleviate uh, their, their sorrows and their. Oh, alleviate. That's the rules? Yeah. Oh, mine does not alleviate. Oh, yeah. I, now that's, yeah, that's, that's tough. I thought we had, we would have to pair it with something similar. That's totally fine too. That is totally fine. If you've got something that pairs well with this, like a fine wine with a dish, please, <laughs> let's hear it. 
Um, I, I have one. Okay. Have you guys seen The Night House? Yeah, I have. I've seen bits and pieces of it, yeah. So it's about death following this woman, and it's way better than this movie. Okay. It's fantastic. I love The Night House. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the director of the new Hellraiser movie made The Night House. Oh, yes. that's true. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, Brandy, what about you? Um... I was like a deep blue sea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a fun movie, at least too. You yeah, you get yeah, you get some fun deaths in that one too. All, but it's all by the shark instead of death specifically. Yeah. yeah. And at least I could see the shark. Yeah. Eat Sam Jackson. Sorry, spoiler alert. Oh, so good. And you could see Samuel L. Jackson get swallowed up in one. Yeah. Thing. Oh, so good. And Nathan, what about you? Uh, I went with another movie about a road trip gone wrong and a lot of mistaken identity. Oh, boy. 1994's Dumb and Dumber. Oh. Okay. All right. That definitely will uplift you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if the Dumb and Dumber, the dog car, was a part of this pile? <laughs> <laughs> I would love that cameo so much. Yeah. That was what the pregnant lady was in instead of the white van. Oh my god! And then fucking Lloyd just sticks his head out the car and goes, "Do you realize what you've done?" <laughs> <laughs> he resuscitates her and he's like, "Big gulps, huh?" Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I need to see this movie now. He delivers her baby for her. Oh my! Oh, uh, uh, I'm gonna. Oh no! He's at the scene of the accident. He's like, "I'm gonna put out some vibes." <sighs> <laughs> Well, this movie promised me a spring break very early on. Yeah. And that we never get to see. So I went with Spring Breakers. Yeah. Because I want to see a good spring break. I think that movie is vastly underrated. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm dead. I mean, how many movies can you put Selena Gomez as peeing on the side of a road? Yeah. <laughs> During an accident? There? During a massive car accident? <laughs> oh, they pan over from the car accident. It's just the four <laughs> spring breaker girls. <laughs> I'm just always a fan of how unhinged Harmony Korine movies are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You just imagine, um, what's that guy, James Franco, mm -hmm. in full costume driving through this accident. Spring break. Spring break. <laughs> oh, yeah, James Franco is riffraff. Yes. Oh, uh, that would have been great. <laughs> Loved it. Well, okay, I think I've already said my piece on it, but mm -hmm. does everyone else recommend this movie or no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it's a fun time. If you want to see, like, a campy horror movie with some gore, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they could play it during the defensive driving course my mom paid for. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. That's true. They could show these kids what's going to happen. Just play the one scene of the accident, and then everybody goes home. That's it. Yep. Can I tell you, too, you mentioned showing this cor this this movie in a course. I was talking to my uh, my stepdaughter today. She's nine. And she said that they're still playing the same uh, Bill Nye and Schoolhouse Rock videos in school. And I'm like, Good. really? Wow. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just like, God <laughs> damn. We're old. Bill Nye is getting them chicks. Well, I'm just like, they don't have they don't have any new like people who make like education for kids. No. now. They're just reusing our shit. That's true. I, I kind of dig it. She's like, yeah, everyone likes the Bill and I song. I'm like. Sister, let me tell you, fucking 20 years ago, we fucking did the same thing. I mean, it, it fucking slaps. It does. I still know inertia is a property of matter because of that fucking... Like changing. Bill, 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 Bill. Yeah, I think a thousand percent I recommend this movie. I think it's balls to the wall stupid, but I was never bored. Right. It's entertaining as hell. The hijinks from the previous movie are cranked up to 11, and it's so fucking funny. Like, I have such a good time with this movie. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'll say is it's the one I revisit the most because it's such an encapsulation of its time, but it's so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is, yeah, you, yeah, this was the one I definitely rewatched the most. Like, mm -hmm. I did, I saw maybe the, the first one a few times, but the second one was, it was the one that I used to rewatch a lot. When I was younger. Yeah, I, I go back to it like every other year. I will say the one thing that I do like about this movie, too, is that it's short and to the point. Mm -hmm. That's fair. They wrap shit up in an hour and a half. I'm like, can movies be more like this length? Yeah. I love seeing that 90 minute runtime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, cool, because I got shit to do. And a lot of that is the pile up. <laughs> I know. Like, not even kidding. Like, it's a lot. That premonition scene is a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed a lot will happen in one minute in this movie, too. Mm -hmm. Like, with the deaths like they go by so fast agreed i have a question yeah so do you think the cop and what it's her face do they eventually die like what happens to the people that do live i thought you're gonna ask if they fucked I, no they definitely did they definitely <laughs> did I, I mean that too duh wait it's 
I thought she was like 17. Never mind. I know. <laughs> at the beginning, when it looked like he was making bedroom eyes at her, I was like, sir, isn't that a minor? That's yeah, like, very true. And he's in his 30s. Anyways, do they do these people die when their story has wrapped? I feel like they have to have a throwaway line in one of these sequels about them. Probably. Yeah, and I don't remember. No. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've watched the other ones. Yeah, because in the first one, weren't they in high school? Yeah, yeah it was they their were in high school, school. trip. Yeah, they, well, they had. I think they were just graduating or about to, and they were just going graduated. on a trip yeah. for French class. Yeah. French class. It's similar to that scene in Jason Takes Manhattan where they just graduated, but for some reason they still have homework. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> well, Brandy, you know, it's hard to tell when they all look like they're in their 30s and this one kid who's supposed to be nine is 15 and he looks 20. I don't know. That is true. Everyone's ageless. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, as the farther you go back in time, the more people look old yep. in movies for some reason. Yes. And these these people look like they're in their, all in their 30s. Or just people in general yeah. like if you look at people that's supposed to be 16 in the 50s it's like why do you, why do y'all look older than me in my 30s i don't know I get it richie cunningham looking ass <laughs> so my assumption is like pretty much everyone that's involved in the situation dies right yeah mm-hmm. okay well i i'm gonna i tell you what i think i'm gonna rewatch the third one uh tonight okay. to see if maybe there's news of these two characters in that one please report back yeah news updates i'll report back <laughs> so. yeah i need to go back and rewatch all of them really yeah i just i think i feel bad for mark the most out of all these characters i think he got it the worst who's mark oh uh, <laughs> finally yes! finally <laughs> nathan, and I, nathan and i have been trying to get you guys to say that the whole fucking episode oh no what did i do uh, yeah i'm like i don't see that name on imdb that, that was just a call back to our freddy versus jason episode uh. I don't know their names. I'm going to forget about this movie in 10 minutes. That's okay. That's the whole reason we did it. <laughs> We've been ch- Nathan and I, before we started recording, said, do you think we could convince them that there's a character named Mark in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> then you got me because I had no idea. Well, we, didn't, we didn't know the fucking difference. Yeah, you got me. That's so good. Oh, that, I'm so glad that paid off. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> Honestly, unless I'm really, really like distinctively paying attention i don't usually take away like names from movies <laughs> just clear rivers because it's so stupid no sure. that was that was uh, oh what a perfect way to wrap up this episode that, thank you <laughs> what a great button thank you <laughs> that was the real silver lining that yes agreed oh, well man. uh listener we finally arrived at the end here mm-hmm. at the final destination of the podcast <laughs> if you have some feedback if you have some notes if you want to voice your thoughts about final destination 2 you can do that by emailing us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Um, we're very active on both of those, so feel free to reach out. Mm-hmm. Or you can hop over to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist uh, and you know, give us your thoughts on this movie. Let us know what you think. If you haven't already, please, as always, subscribe, rate, leave feedback, follow us on social media. Uh, whatever you want to do, just do that. Just just get uh, get at us. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Well, we're lucky, uh, Nathan, because this October has five Mondays in it. It sure does. So we have our fifth and final spooky lighting Uh coming up next week. And it's Mally's pick, who is not here, but maybe, just maybe if we try real hard enough, we can uh, hear a voice from beyond the grave. (laughs) (laughs) Next week, Face Off gets a run for its money. (laughs) Uh, that's good this is great because we're from the future well i i'm excited for uh spooky linings to be to be wrapping up i'm sad because it is my favorite time of year on the podcast but all good things must come to an end and uh, spooky linings will come to an end as well as something else next week um brandy and jen thank you so much for returning this was a blast absolutely yep <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yep. I can't tell if that was a defeated, like, oh, uh, yeah, sure. Or like, no, that's just, that's just Jen. No, I'm just mentally preparing what you guys are going to throw at us next time. <laughs> so I just have to, like, get ready. Oh, sure. That's, that's true. There's, um, last I looked, there's over a thousand movies on my potential episodes list. Only a thousand? Only a thousand. I'll make sure to, to get just dig through the ditches of the dredge <laughs> and find the worst possible. Oh Maybe we'll do like human centipede or something. No, and bring you guys back. Please, <laughs> I, never, no. I never saw that and I don't uh, want to. I gotta go. I, I have to leave. I promise next time it will be a good movie. You guys could hold me to that. It'll be a good movie. Yeah. I'm like, can we get like an actual good movie? No, it's going to be human centipede third sequence. I'm just going to oh, burn <laughs> my house down. Hey, 
I've never seen the second or third one, Don't. and I am good. Ugh. I'm good. I have no desire to. No, thank you. They're barely movies. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll bring on you like like Citizen Kane or something very prestigious. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> man? <laughs> Why do y'all hate us? No, no, no. We love you guys so much. This is racism and misogyny. <laughs> this is racism. This is a hate crime. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We'll we'll get you back on something good. I promise. We'll hold you to All it. All right. As long as Mark lives, we will bring you guys to <laughs> Mark is my witness. Who the fuck is Mark? <laughs> <laughs> fuck Mark. <laughs> well, I think that's all we have to say. So uh lastly, we'll say one final thing here. Mm. Number one. Rest in peace, Oatmeal. Yeah. Number two, rest in peace, Mark. <laughs> and as always, come on, I'm getting horny. Let's go get the guys. <laughs> the condom ch- chains and whips. <laughs> oh, man. Excelsior. 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 Oh, look at us. Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!